my lovely listeners, and welcome back to Willow's Wonderful Tales. Today's story is going to be Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. Chapter 1. Down the Rabbit Hole Alice was beginning to get tired of sitting by her sister on the riverbank with nothing to do. Once or twice she had peered into the book her sister was reading, but it had no pictures or conversations in it, and what good is a book, thought Alice, without pictures or conversations? She thought about making a daisy chain, but didn't feel like getting up and picking the daisies, so she laid her head in her sister's lap and watched the clouds. Suddenly, a white rabbit with pink eyes ran by. Oh dear, oh dear, I will be late, the rabbit said. It took a watch out of its pocket, looked at it, and then hurried away. Being very curious, Alice jumped to her feet and ran across the field after it. She was just in time to see it pop down a large rabbit hole under the hedge. Without thinking, she followed. The rabbit hole was a long tunnel that seemed to go on forever. She made her way through the narrow passageway as best she could, when suddenly it dropped down. Alice didn't have a minute to think before she realized she was falling down a very deep well. She seemed to be falling very slowly, so she spent her time looking around. Cupboards, bookshelves, maps, and pictures that hung upon nails filled the walls of the well. She took down a jar from one of the shelves as she passed it. It was labeled orange marmalade, but to her disappointment it was empty, so she carefully put it back into one of the cupboards as she fell past it. Down, 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 she went. Would the fall ever come to an end? I wonder how many miles I've fallen, she said out loud. I must be getting near the center of the earth. I wonder if I will fall right through it. Down, down, down. There is nothing else to do, so Alice began talking to herself. Dinah will miss me, I think. Dinah was her cat. Oh, I wish you were here with me, Dinah. She dozed off and dreamed that she was walking hand in hand with her cat, when suddenly, thump, thump, down she came upon a heap of sticks and dry leaves, and the fall was over. Alice stood up and wiped herself off. She looked up to see where she had fallen from, but it was too dark to see anything at all. In front of her was another long passageway, and the white rabbit was hurrying down it. There wasn't a moment to lose. Away she went after the rabbit. Oh, my ears and whiskers, how late it's getting, she heard it say. She ran like the wind to catch up to it, but the rabbit was gone. There she stood, alone in a long hallway that was lit up by a row of lamps hanging from the ceiling. There were doors all around the hall, but they were all locked. She began to wonder if she was ever going to get out again. She decided to walk a little further ahead to see what she could find. She came to a little three-legged table made of solid glass. There was nothing on it except a tiny golden key, and Alice's first thought was that it might belong to one of the doors in the hall. But the locks were either too large, or the key was too small, and it would not open any of the doors. She checked them again. This time, she found a low curtain that she had not noticed before, and behind it was a little door about fifteen inches high. She tried the little golden key in the lock, and to her great delight it fit. Alice opened the door. She knelt down to look through it and saw the most beautiful garden she had ever seen. How she wished to get out of that dark hall and wander the beds of bright flowers and cool fountains, but she could not even get her head through the doorway. She went back to the table, hoping she would find another key on it or perhaps a book of rules to tell her how to get through the do door. This time she found a little bottle on it that was not there before. Around the neck of the bottle was a paper label with the words, Drink Me, printed on it in large letters. Alice picked up the bottle, and seeing that it was not marked poison, she tasted it. It was delicious, and she quickly finished it. What a curious feeling, said Alice. I must be getting smaller. She was right. She was now only ten inches high. Now I am the right size to go through the little door and into that beautiful garden, she thought to herself. Alice went back to the door, but had forgotten the little golden key. When she went back to the table for it, she could not reach it. She could see it through the glass, and she tried her best to climb up one of the legs of the table, but it was too slippery. Alice sat down and cried. As she wiped the tears from her eyes, she noticed a little glass box lying under the table. She opened it and found a small cake that had the words, Eat Me, marked out in raisins. Well, I'll eat it, said Alice, and if it makes me grow bigger, I can reach the key. If it makes me grow smaller, I can slide under the door. Either way, I'll get into the garden, and I don't care which happens. She ate a little bit and held her hand on the top of her head to feel which way it was growing. She was surprised to find that she remained the same size, so she set to work and soon finished off the cake. Chapter 2. The Pool of Tears Curiouser and curiouser, cried Alice. I'm growing like a garden weed. Goodbye, feet. 
In fact, she had sprouted up to over nine feet high. She grabbed the little golden key off the table and hurried back to the garden door. Poor Alice. Now she was too big to fit through the door, and all she could do was lie down on one side and look through into the garden with one eye. She sat up and began to cry again. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, she said, crying like this. Stop it right now. But she went on, shedding gallons of tears until there was a large pool around her, about four inches deep and reaching halfway down the hall. She heard a little pattering of feet in the distance, and she quickly dried her eyes to see what was coming. It was the white rabbit, all dressed up with a pair of white gloves in one hand and a large fan in the other. He was in a great hurry and muttering to himself, Oh, the Duchess, the Duchess, oh, she will be angry if I keep her waiting. Alice was desperate for help, so she decided to see if the white rabbit might have some ideas. She said in a timid voice, If you please, sir. The rabbit was startled. He dropped the white gloves and the fan and scurried away into the darkness as fast as he could go. Oh, now what am I going to do, she sighed. Alice put the key on the table and picked up the fan and gloves. Since the hall was very hot, she fanned herself. Who in the world am I? She said. I'm sure I'm not Ada or Mabel. Oh my, do I still remember all my school lessons? Then she practiced her math and geography, which all came out wrong. Everything is so different and I am so different, she said, very confused. As she was talking, she looked down and saw that she had put on one of the little gloves. Wait, she said. How did I put on this glove? I must be growing small again, but how? She had been cooling herself with the rabbit's fan. Suddenly, she realized the fanning was making her grow smaller and smaller. She dropped the fan just in time. That was close, said Alice, frightened at the sudden change, but very glad to find she was still in one piece. Oh, the garden! She ran as fast as she could back to the little door, but the little door was shut again, and the little golden key was lying on the glass table just like before. Suddenly, she slipped. Splash! There she was, up to her chin, in salt water. She had fallen into the pool of tears, but she had cried when she was nine feet high. I wish I hadn't cried so much, said Alice as she swam around trying to find a way out. I, I hope I don't drown in my own tears. Just then, she heard something splashing around in the pool, and she swam toward it. At first, she thought it must be a walrus or hippopotamus, but then she remembered how small she was and saw that it was only a mouse. I wonder if I can speak to this mouse. There's no harm in trying, thought Alice. So she said, Oh, mouse, do you know a way out of this pool? The mouse looked at her and seemed to wink with one of its little eyes, but it said nothing. Perhaps it doesn't understand English, thought Alice. Maybe it's a French mouse. So she said, where is my cat? In French. The mouse jumped out of the water and fell back in, shaking with fright. Oh, I'm so sorry, cried Alice. I forgot that you don't like cats. Not like cats, cried the mouse. Would you like cats if you were me? The mouse was trembling down to the end of its tail. Oh, I'm so sorry to have frightened you, said Alice. Please don't swim away. Let's get to the shore, replied the mouse, and then I'll tell you why I hate cats. By this time, the pool was getting crowded with the birds and animals that had fallen into it. There was a duck and a dodo, a lorry and an eaglet, and several other strange creatures. Alice led the way, and the creatures followed her to the shore.